call out to you. Good morning. Good morning and a warm welcome to worship here at Brighton's Parish Church. Whether you're joining us here or online, you are most welcome, particularly if you are a visitor amongst us or one of the members, family or officers within the Boys and Girls Brigade, you are most welcome. Prior to the start of our service, you'll have seen the notices on screen, which are taken from the news sheet. And if you're at home, this can be downloaded from the news page of our website. Can I just briefly say a big thank you for all the support towards the Guild Retiring Offering, the Blyswood Shoeboxes and the Faith Mission Bookstall. Your generosity in all the, these areas 
is much appreciated. And if I can flag up for your continued generosity and support, the Israel and Palestine trip fundraiser, which is this Saturday coming. Anyone from the community is welcome to come along for this chilly night. And so come along. I'm sure there will be things that aren't uh, quite hitting the top level of heat. So I'm sure there'll be something for everyone. We would love to have you along if you are able. Please take the time to read the rest of the notices uh, after the service. For those in the sanctuary, a quick reminder that there are groups for our younger children as well as a crash room, if that would be of use for anyone. We gather to worship God, trusting in Him as we remember those who have given their lives for the sake of others. So let us take a moment to pause, stilling ourselves in the Lord's presence, for He is here. And whilst we do that, I will light our gathering candle and Margaret will bring in the Bible. the choir with the introit, What Shall We Pray? in the Psalms. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You established the earth and it endures. Let us take encouragement from God's word, for our God is faithful. And so let us worship him. As we sing together our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please do be seated. Okay. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Amen. 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 Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our eternal, faithful God, you are our refuge and strength. That one who stands beside us through all the seasons of life, who will never leave us nor forsake us, whose love for this world is so very great that you came in the person of Jesus to save and to redeem. On this day when we commemorate and commend to you all those who have lived and died in the service of others, we're glad to remember also your steadfastness and power, that truly yours is the kingdom, no matter what others and other rulers of this world may say. In a world, Lord, often torn asunder by conflict and hate, it can be all too easy to doubt these truths, to doubt you, to doubt your presence, your power, and your love. Yet we are a people who remember that in the cross of Jesus, his death on Calvary's hill, and then the empty tomb of Easter, when he rose from the dead, conquering the grave, conquering sin, conquering evil, and paving the way for that day when all there will be is your kingdom. We remember these great truths and so ask you to have mercy upon us, Lord, that we might, with your grace and help, trust you anew today. Trust that the good news we have in Jesus is true, and that his love will overcome all evil. In his name we pray this, as we take to our lips that prayer he taught his disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you are able, would the congregation please be upstanding? They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we give our today. I invite those with wreaths to come forward now and lay them as a token of our remembrance. We continue in worship as we sing together our next hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Let's come before our Father and speak to him. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you now. Our minds are taken away with what's going on around us, with what's at home, what's going on at home, what's going on in our lives. We look at the news and we see the anarchy that's out there, the chaos that's out there. We have problems at school, at work. We have ill health. 
We have relational problems, Lord. And we have to try and leave them at the door of this building and come in here to speak to you and, and this is the important bit, Lord, to listen to you. Father God, it's awfully difficult sometimes to do that. But we try our best. Lord, we're here to celebrate the memory of people who have fought for our country. And Lord, I know all of us, in one way or another, treat it with contempt. We complain about this, that, and the next thing, and maybe we've got rights to do that, Lord. But at the same time, we have men and women who have died defending our nation. And it's those that we come to remember today. We also remember, Lord, the men and women who are doing that job now. And we have people in our church, Lord, who have family members out there standing for their country, not only here but in foreign lands. We have men and women who have been injured in the past and they now have to live with the fact that they have lost something of themselves defending their country. Father God, we honour these men and women we thank you that they were willing to do this because the price they paid has given us freedom. It might be being eroded away, Lord. It might, in your eyes, seem to be that we are turning our back on everything that was good about this country, everything moral, everything decent, but, Lord, it's still there. And we thank you and praise you for this, Lord. We are not living in a country where our very thoughts are held accountable to us, where people are dying for faith. Father God, we thank you for Britain. We thank you that we live in relative safety. Father God, we come before you because of Jesus, because Jesus paid the price, the ultimate price for every single one of us. He who did not know sin, who stood against temptation, still went to the cross as he was foreordained to do to pay the penalty for us. It's for salvation, Lord, so that one day we will stand before him and he'll welcome us in and you will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come in, I've got a place for you. But Lord, a lot of people say about Christians, oh, well, you're all right. It's just for the end, isn't it? No, it's not, Lord. You change our lives now when we let you into our lives. When we walk into this kingdom, Lord, you deal with so much in our lives, with attitude problems, one of the most difficult things to deal with, with ill health, with relational problems. Lord, are we a people that can destroy each other so quickly by a word or a deed. And yet you come in and say, listen to me, do what I ask you to do. Forgive us, Lord, for not doing it. But thank you, Father God, that no matter how poor our results are, your love pours down upon us from heaven itself through Jesus. We have so many people who are so unwell in our church, Lord. Be with them. Father God, make your presence known through Jesus in their lives. We have people who are worried about jobs, money not coming in, particularly now with the way things are going. Father God, make them aware of you involved in their situations. Lord, we could pour out our hearts again and again to you with all the problems that we have, and yet you say, look to me Trust me, look upwards, and Father God, help us in Jesus' name to do exactly that. We think about people in our own church, particularly we're thinking about today, Lord, our praise band. Bless them abundantly, Lord. Give them the words through your Holy Spirit to sing to us, lifting you up before us in glory. Our choir doing exactly the same thing, Lord, settling our hearts as we come before you every Sunday. We think about the groups that are involved in our church, our art group, 
the guild, the men's group, all the little groups that are available. Lord, we ask that you come in with your holy presence into their lives. We think about the people who have restricted abilities and their carers, particularly the ones we know within our own congregation. Father God, we thank you for these carers. Yes, they're getting paid for it, Lord, but it's a hard job nevertheless, and they do it with a willing heart. We ask your blessing upon them. Father God, change us inside as well as out. Father God, through your Holy Spirit, may you come into our lives. May you speak to us, and may, Lord, we listen and not turn away and let our hearts grow cold and hard because I know that you'll eventually say you're not listening. Lord, soften our hearts. It says in Ezekiel, turn our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. The problem with hearts of flesh, Lord, is that they hurt, but that's part of life, and we have to accept that. And when we hurt, Lord, you come in and say, you may be hurting, but I still love you. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We lift you up. We glorify you. We thank you for the people who are in our congregation who do all the work they're doing. We particularly bring Scott before you, Lord, our minister, the one who has to stand here and give of you, of heaven, of your words, of your desires, of your commandments, of your acknowledgments of what we can do and what we should be doing. And I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you fill them full of your Holy Spirit. They've gone through a lot, the man's family just now. But Lord, we ask that you settle them down so that they can come back fully and completely under your banner with your service. Father God, the best person we can thank is Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the price paid. We thank you for the blessings that we get because of that price paid. Father God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the Son in whose name we pray. Amen. The reading this morning's the, the readings this morning are taken from John 13 chapters verses 1 3 to 5 12 to 17 34 to 35 which begin on page 1081 of the new, of the Pew Bible It was just before the Passover festival Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father Having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped round him. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word.
We continue in worship as we sing together our next hymn, Here is Love, Vast as the Ocean. Let us take a moment to pray before we think about God's Word. Come Holy Spirit and soften our hearts to the Word of God. Come Holy Spirit to speak truth into our hearts and lives. Come Holy Spirit with power and deep conviction for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you a person who likes change. Are you a person who likes change? Is there anyone willing enough to be bold enough to say, yeah, I like change? Oh, there's a few. I would have expected at least one, yeah. Oh, there's, there's a few, but not many of us, unsurprisingly. Well, I wonder if you might talk to your neighbor in a moment and share with them one change you have experienced this past year. So one change you've experienced over to you. Okay, uh, it sounds like there was uh, a lot of things we could be uh, talking about there and uh, fill up with those conversations if, uh, if you feel able after the service. As a man's family, uh, we've been through a fair bit of change in the last year. Uh, we welcomed uh, little Ennis, who's just about at that stage of trying to walk. Uh, he's causing trouble and mayhem. Uh, we've moved vans. We're, we're now in the Wallace Braes area rather than right behind the, the church here. So that extra five minutes to get to church in the morning. Um, we, like all of us, have experienced change with the cost of living. Heating costs, fuel costs, food costs. And like all of us as well, we experience that uncertainty as we read the news and, and ponder what's going to happen next with all the changes we face as a nation and internationally in the world. Some of the changes we are experiencing just now are because of war, particularly the war in Ukraine. And sure, we experience the, the cost, the, the inconvenience of, of fuel costs, heating costs, food costs, but there are others facing much worse than we are. The poor in the world, unjustly and significantly more than us, affected by the, the cost in food and running out of food at times. There are those, obviously, who are having to flee their homes and becoming refugees because of this war. And there is the instability across the world, worse than we've known maybe for generations. And a year ago, only a year ago, we did not think it would really happen. 
we probably thought it was just saber rattling. We really didn't think Putin would follow through. And that recollection of our expectations reminds me of a quote that's attributed in the film The King's Speech to British Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin. And in the film, he says to the king, I was mistaken. I have found it impossible to believe that there is any man in the world so lacking in moral feeling as Hitler, that the world may be hurled for a second time into the abyss of destructive war. Baldwin found it impossible to believe that this might happen again. He couldn't get his head around that possibility and almost refused, really, to change his perspective that Hitler would do such a thing as instigate World War II. It could be said, in some measure, we did the same with Putin. And there are other challenges, aspects of life that we might well be doing the very same with as well. Just now we have a COP going on, trying to do something about climate change again. But it could be said we're doing the same with climate change. That because of the extent of the challenges we face and the changes that need to be made if we are to try and keep um, the world from experiencing the worst effects of climate change, those changes are just so monumental that almost we'd just rather ignore it. Put it off another year, five years, another generation. And we don't want to face up to it. As a church, too, locally and nationally, we are facing challenges and questions. There's falling numbers. We are having to restructure ourselves so dramatically it boggles the mind. And all within the context of a culture which at times is apathetic to Jesus or sometimes even outright hostile to Christianity. And these facets, too, we'd rather ignore. Because, as we just admitted a few moments ago, Few of us like change. Whether it's a change, whether it was due to Hitler or Putin or climate change or what we face in the church, we'd rather not face up to them. But how might we face up to them? What are we to do to become maybe more ready to accept or to embrace or even to pursue change, positive change? Well, Jesus shows us the way. Boys and girls, in our passage today, we heard that Jesus and his friends were sharing in a meal, a special meal called the Passover meal. And during that, did you pick up what Jesus did within that meal? Did you pick up what he did? Anybody know, want to shout out the answer, Laura? Washed their feet. That's right, good listener. Now, that might not sound very odd, well it might sound odd, but it doesn't sound very bad. Um, not many of us have had a foot wash done by someone else. But I was reminded that this same story is written about in my daughter's uh, storybook Bible. And some of you might have that from Sunday school or, or other groups. If you don't, it's a great Bible to pick up. Because in there, sometimes it gives a little bit more information. And so within this story, it says th this. Now, the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals. And sandals are open, aren't they? They don't cover your whole foot, so you can see your skin and, and things underneath. It goes on to say, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dirty, dust, dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty. With all those cows and donkeys and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. So anyone, so anyway, someone had to wash away that dirt. But it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would want to volunteer for that job? Normally it was only done by the lowliest servant. So Jesus is not just washing feet, unusual as that sounds. He's washing off dirt and dung. And I suspect if I had to do it, I'd really want, I'd be on the verge of being sick having to do that. 
So why, boys and girls, do you think Jesus did it? Why did he do it? Any ideas? Any ideas you want to shout out? You don't have to. I think he maybe did it because of love. Because around that event, he says these words. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus was doing this out of love. He was willing to be a servant, to take on a towel, to get down on his knees, to wash those stinking, dirty feet because he loved these people. And what's incredible is that he's God. Jesus is God and yet he was willing to do that. The person who should be served and should should have all the, the wealth and wonder in creation, he takes on that role of a servant. I can't imagine anyone um, take, doing such a thing. Maybe the prime minister or the king or such, like really getting down on knees and, and washing feet that are covered in dung. I can't imagine that. And yet here is God himself doing it. Because he was willing to change because of his love for others. He went on to say, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus is saying to lay down your life, either in death or in service, is the greatest act of love anyone can do. It's the greatest change you can make. And today in Remembrance Sunday, we remember those who have fought and served and given their lives for the sake of others, willing to die even, for love of country, for love of people back home, maybe for the love of people who are persecuted. And so out of love, we stand up to evil. And if we're going to face up to the challenges of our day, the challenges of climate change or change in the church, again, it must be love which motivates us because nothing else has the power to change us and to sustain us through the change. Not hate, not fear, Only love can change us for the better. So Jesus calls us to love so that we can change. But why should we change in the first place? Why bother changing? As a church, we've been working through this little book called Anatomy of a Revived Church. And and today would have been our final chapter in that a chapter titled Meaningful Membership. Meaningful Membership. And basically, it's all about loving others. Loving others so that you sacrifice for the greater good. Loving others so that you move, you shift your mind from entitlement to one of serving others. Loving others enough so that you're more focused on others than on yourself. It's really all about loving others. But at the end of the book, he writes this. In essence, the revived churches chose to live. Here is the complement of change or die. It's change and live. At the start of the book, he says he's done some research and the churches that had a better future, well, they faced up to this truth that if you don't change, you'll die. And that could be said in so many aspects of life and the challenges we face. Dictators will conquer if we don't change. We will ruin the earth now if for ourselves and for future generations if our patterns of living will not change. And yet, as he also says, the compliment is also true. If you change, you can live. And it's why Jesus changed. He chose to give up the wonder, the beauty, the safety, the paradise of heaven and come into our broken world as a mere mortal to become a servant, to know instability, to become a refugee, to one day wash feet and then to another day to die on a cross, although he didn't deserve it. 
He was perfect and never done anything wrong, and yet he died on a cross for love of you and love of me and love of this world. And he said, I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Jesus changed so that we might have life. In his example, we see the way to change, the way of love. And in his example, we also see the reason to change, that love seeks life for others. Love seeks life for others. And so today, he he speaks through his word. He speaks through our gathering to say to each of us, If we have but ears to hear, let me change you. Let me end to your life. Allow me to change your heart so that you might love. And through your love, there might be life for others. Because it's only when we're changed from the inside out, we can stand up and face up to the challenges of our day. Whether that's climate change or oppressors or changes in the church that need to be made, or changes in our own lives, in our own relationships. We need his love to change us from the inside out so that we can love friend and neighbor and even love our foe. I pray it may be so. Amen. In a moment, we'll close with our final hymn, and I would ask that if you're able to remain standing until the color party has left the sanctuary. We close our service remembering and celebrating this King of love, the love of Jesus, as we sing together the hymn, The King Has Come.
go knowing and sharing the love of Jesus, a love to change the world. And so as you go, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Please do be seated. If I can uh, just do a quick announcement to say, uh, please let our uniformed organisations uh, exit first and uh, they'll be parading past in just a, a few minutes or so. So please uh, do join us out on the main street as they uh, parade past. There is uh, tea and coffee refreshments uh, in the hall round the back, so you're most welcome to come and join us for that. And thank you for joining with us this morning. God's blessing be upon you. Oh
God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy rings, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. Sing, the thunderous anthem rings through every. 